Okay, good morning from Uruguay, good afternoon from Europe, uh, and good evening for all the folks uh, in Asia, New Zealand, and all the friends in Australia. Uh, I'm going to say hi to everyone. Right now, my name is Gaston Cruz. Uh, I am a Microsoft MVP, and today I am going to join for the first time the Power BI Days uh, webinars, and my session is going to be Power BI and PowerShell. Um, just uh, know each other. Uh, I speak in different uh, uh, conference uh, here in Uruguay, Chile, Argentina, Brazil, um, some of them in Colombia. Uh, and uh, I love Power BI. I am a Microsoft MVP in the platform, but I, I write a lot about Power BI. I use Power BI from the previous session of this tool. And before that, uh, Power Query in Excel, Power Pivot, and all that data analytics stuff. Uh, I'm going to present right now with uh, one of my friends and colleagues, and I work with him so many times in different projects. Uh, his name is Felipe Lima, and I'm going to uh, give a minute for him to present himself to the audience. Um, hi, I'm Felipe. I'm a colleague from Gaston, and I'm encouraged I'm for the demo in, in this presentation. OK. Uh, Go ahead, Chen, if you want, and then you can uh, to put, put put the poll uh, the poll on on the screen, so so every everyone can answer the poll. Uh, okay, so people are now seeing the screen. What's your principal role in Power BI projects? Um, so either data analytics, an architect. Are you a developer? Maybe you're a manager, or you're doing something else that we don't know about yet. Um, at the moment, it's about 20% of the people who are doing a, a different role than any of these that we, we mentioned. Um, I'm going to let this roll for a, a little bit longer until everybody gets a chance to answer. Yeah. Okay. So m most people seem to be uh, developers, with about 40% uh, being developers. We have about 24% people doing, oh, a lot of people have woken up, votes are coming in fast. Okay, well, we got the minute mark, I'll close the, the poll. So with 83% of the people having voted, can I share the results? It turns out that we have 45% developers and 10% doing something completely different. So, great, great. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll hide it again. Uh, let me know when you want to set up the next poll. Yeah, let's go. Let's go and set the, the second one. Oh, right after. Okay, here we go. Has everyone ever used PowerShell? And what projects did they use it on? Um, so if you have used it, please just type in the chat, in the chat window on, on the right side of the screen. Just type what type of project you've used it on. So personally, I've, I've been using PowerShell to automate deployments for uh, uh, for SQL Server projects, BI projects. Um, I've doing Power BI automation as well using the API. Um, I, I've written some uh, uh, a little log collector, which I think you're going to talk about uh, or something similar. Um, yeah. Seems people are a bit shy to type in the chat when <laughs> going to use it for. Okay. So I'll close the poll with 92% of the people having voted. Okay, great, great. So as you can see, about 60% of the people have never used PowerShell before. And okay. I'm curious what the rest use it for. Maybe okay, great, uh, great, great. Uh, so let's go and let's move on with the uh, with the presentation. I'm going to uh, introduce uh, why we can have something doing uh, 
tasks and things in, using PowerShell and why you, you want to use that one or, or you should know something about PowerShell and Power BI. So let's move on with the presentation. The first one is the requirements. When you have to use uh, PowerShell and why and what is the requirements to use PowerShell uh, behind the scenes with Power uh, BI uh, artifacts? So we have different components right now. Uh, with you have Power BI, you have, uh, for example, PowerShell models, uh, Azure Active Directory, of course, app registration behind the scenes in the portal of Azure, app permissions, uh, the installation of models to use some scripts uh, regarding PowerShell. Uh, one of the, the, the first uh, things that I want to just share with the audience is that you don't need anything else to use PowerShell in your own Windows desktop. You just open uh, the PowerShell screen uh, and you can start scripting PowerShell. What you have to, to know before that is that every PowerShell uh, is using models and you can install your own models and you can search for models in GitHub and you can find different models uh, and install them to use different commands uh, in PowerShell. So, so that's being said, as you can see in the screen and the requirements, I'm going to show you the steps that you have to follow uh, behind the scenes to use Power BI and PowerShell. First of all, what you need to know is that you have to register an application to uh, access the data behind the scenes in Power BI. All the data that I am mentioned right now is, for example, if you want to access the data sets that uh, Power BI uh, has, if you want to access the workspaces that you have in your Power BI uh, tenant, if you want to access dashboards, if you want to access reports, you have to, first of all, go to that URL that I mentioned in the registration. You have to go to dev.powerbi.com slash APPS and register your application. It's really easy to do that. You just have to, and I'm gonna share my screen with that sample. And you have here this, this screen, dev.powerbi.com slash APPS. You, you have to go there you register your login with your account of Power BI. Then after that, after the sign of Power BI, you have to go to next and you register here your application. So for example, in this case, I'm going to register uh, Power BI base my app. This is an application that you have to create to identify that application in your, in your Azure portal. Then you decide what type of application you are developing. In this case, I'm going to use native. And then you select all the API access that you want for this application. So if you want to run a PowerShell and access all the data in the data sets, or the reports, or the workspace, or the groups, you have to click whatever API you want to access. And if you want only access in read-only, or you need to read and write behind the scenes in the API, you just click whatever you want or you need to access uh, in the API, or just click the select all checkbox and then you register that application. When you register the application, after that registration is going to send you an application ID and you have to use that application ID in your Azure portal to register the application and to access all the information uh, with the scripts of PowerShell. So, 
going backward to our presentation, you have this first step to create the application in the dev development or developer uh, screen in Power BI. After that, you register the application and as we mentioned before, you just click all the checkbox that you need uh, that depends on the access that you need in the case of the application and in the case of you are developing PowerShell behind the scenes using the backend of the Power BI. So after that, after the, the developer uh, application registration, you have to go to your Azure portal and uh, remember that the Azure portal you can access and uh, all the audience that uh, are there, you can just create uh, your Azure uh, account. Just you have the free registration, you have vouchers right now, you have the students' uh, vouchers to use Azure portal. You can go directly to this screen, and I'm going to show you the screen of the Azure portal. You can go here, as you can see. Uh, portal.azure.com, register and login with your account. And after that, what you have to do is go to search resources or create a new resource and go to app registration. I'm going to type that here, go to app registrations, and you have to register the application that before we created uh, in the developer of Power BI screen. You have to go there, and in my case, I'm going to see before I created this one Power BI, PowerShell, Power BI integration. As you can see, we have an application ID. The application ID is created before from your uh, developer portal. And here we have two steps to do, and I'm going to show in the presentation, after you register the application, you have to go here and create a new application registration. You have to complete the name of your uh, application, you have to select the application type and you have to uh, complete the redirect URL. Uh, and in this case, I'm just uh, completing one of the URL that we have. In this case, this URL is the login to the Microsoft uh, online session and your tenant domain and saying that you have the uh, OAuth uh, registration in the authorization. A step. So, Gaston, hey, if I can interrupt for a moment. Um, some yeah. people are asking, what are the actual permissions required to uh, register uh, that API? Because not yeah. everybody can do that, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. You, you have, when you create the, the Power BI uh, application, you have, you, you need to have uh, an account with admin rights in your Power BI tenant. After that, after that, you have to, you have, you need to have uh, in your Azure tenant, you need to have access as, as a developer and not as an admin of Azure to create an app registration. One, one thing that I want to share with the audience and with you, Shan, is that uh, in Azure, uh, the best practice to do this is to create a resource group first of all and put all your artifacts that you need here in that resource group. That is just from governance perspective in Azure. Uh, the best way is to create the app registration and uh, that app registration goes to link between the first step that we did in the developer uh, session of Power BI is kind of connecting the developer, developer session with this screen in the Azure portal. So you, you have to create the app registration after you register the application in the developer portal of Power BI. 
I don't know if that answered the question, Chen. Uh, let, let me know if we, if any any other uh, audience uh, have any any question regarding this, so we we can move forward with the explanation. I will. I, I think it does cover uh, the necessary topics. Thank you. Okay, great. And uh, the next step, and that's going to be the permissions that you need to have uh, behind the scenes when you want to script between the application that you create uh, in the developer portal of Power BI and the uh, in some way the permission that you need to have for one-to-one -one artifacts of Power BI, you need to allow permissions in the Azure portal for this application, for this application to enter the Power BI REST API. Yeah, that's that's the, the main point here in this in this slide. So back back again to my session of session of Azure, you can see that I click one of the applications that I created before, and then in settings, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that in settings of this PowerShell Power BI integration, this, this, this is the app registration that I did, you have the API access, and when I click required permissions, it's gonna show you the application that this application, this application is going to access access the Power BI service, and you can see that when I click the Power BI services, it's going to, it's going to show me what kind of de delegation you have in this case. So in this case, I need I need to delegate permissions to access all this content in Power BI services. So if you need to access more information or less information, you just should have go here to this part of the screen in the app registration and allow your application to enter or to access the Power BI uh, REST API. So if you need to go ahead and uh, allow us to read and write all the storage, read and write all dashboards, or read and write a data set, you need to allow your app registration here to enable the access to the Power BI service. So moving forward with this step, I'm gonna show you that this is the, the screen that I showed before, the required permissions for your app registration in Azure portal. After that, I just, uh, I'm showing just the delegated permission that I did and uh, access the application registration to access all the Power BI REST API. And in this case, I check everything to allow my registration of the application to access all the artifacts in the Power BI REST API. Uh, I'm, I am allowing everything, uh, uh, perhaps in, 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 in each case and each scenario and each process, you have to decide carefully if you need only read access or read and write access for your artifacts in the Power BI REST API. After that, you are ready to go because uh, after that, you just need to open a, a, a PowerShell screen and you have, and you can start uh, the models installation. What, why we need models installation? Because the models installation allows you to script in some way and access in some way and do those some some sort of stuff and tasks and activities behind the scenes using these models behind the scenes with the Power BI REST API. So, uh, first of all, if you need to know more about these models and you need a guide to use uh, these models, you can go here. I am showing uh, a guide, a uh, HTTPS guide for GitHub, and you can see in GitHub. Uh, I'm gonna thanks Rui Romano that he is the owner of this GitHub DevScope, and I'm gonna show you that just 
you can go to the GitHub here and see that you can download these Power BI uh, models. You can download, you can install them, you can just go, for example, to the PowerShell gallery. Of course, we have the Power BI PS uh, version, and you need only to run this command here, install model name, Power BI PS, and you can use that uh, all that model and all the features behind the scene that model uh, in your uh, PowerShell scripting to Power BI. Remember that the, that the objective of this is to use Power BI in a different way and obtain more information from your Power BI tenant and from your Power BI reports and from your Power BI dashboards in a different way. Uh, it's, it's just getting all the information of, that you already have in Power BI and use PowerShell to obtain that kind of information. So move again to the slide and I can see that uh, this is going to be the, the, the second part of our uh, webinar. So I am going to leave uh, the, the presentation and I am going to present Felipe as uh, the demo guide. And in this, in this case, uh, he's going to demo in some reports and some scripting that you can do using PowerShell behind the scenes. So I'm going to leave uh, with Felipe, and Felipe is going to introduce uh, the, the ways that you can uh, run different commands using PowerShell. Great, Gaston. Uh, when a company begins to explore and exploit its, its potential using Power BI, it will come a time when the applied effort should be evaluated. So we have two key pillars to fundamental questions that must be answered. The first one is about the sensitive data, uh, the quantity, how much information our organization has created, how many dashboards, how many reports, how many data sets we have created in our tenant. And the second one is about the value of this report and dashboards. Uh, how they are being used within our organization if the time is spent in the development of a report is reflected in its use by the areas that requests it. Because we can spend 100 or 160 hours developing a beautiful report uh, with super complex measures for the management of the company. And that the manager has never seen it or see it once every month when it should be used every day, for example. And having this information, we can do things to solve the problem, maybe provide training uh, on the consumption of reports or finding out why they are not using it to, to add whatever it takes to be, to be used. We can answer these two questions using three things. PowerShell, uh, the Power BI REST API, and Power BI again. We will develop a report in Power BI to monitor the volume and the use of reports in Power BI. It sounds great, right? Let's see how we do it. So, this is one of the scripts, the PowerShell script that will help us to achieve our goal. Uh, you don't need nothing weird, all you have probably you already have in your machine. Uh, Windows PowerShell ISC is an AD tool that all we have. Go to start button and search for PowerShell ISC. And this will be our development environment. Um, the first thing we are going to do is import the PowerShell model here. Okay, uh, this Power BI APS model that we previously installed using the command that Gaston showed. Uh, this will make it easier for us to console the Power BI REST API. Can we call the Power BI REST API without needing this model? Uh, the answer is yes, sure. But using these models, they are already created, make the work easier. Uh, we can do it in a very easy and intuitive way. Uh, the next step is to set our Power BI credentials. Okay. Uh, to be able to automate this process. I'm a fan of process automation. I'm seriously convinced that 
if something could be automated, then it must be automated. And setting this credential, in this way, we can configure a Windows schedule task, for example, and have this script run every day at 2 a.m. Or in a fashion way, we can use an Azure function. We can create an Azure function in the Azure portal, select the language of our function as PowerShell, and use the same script as the function code and schedule it to run daily basis at the time we want. And in this way, we, don't, we do not need to call Bob, Bob is my fictional DBA, at three o'clock in the morning to enter his credentials and execute the script. Nowadays, that kind of thing cannot happen. We must automate the process. Okay, we automate the process by typing the credentials in the script. It's not necessary uh, that they are visible in the files. We can encrypt them or place them in an external file and our script obtains the credential of that external file. Uh, this can be done with three lines of code in PowerShell. It's not complicated and can be a requirement when you need to be careful with sensitive data. Or in the case of using a natural function, we already have the security because in order to access the function, it is required to log in to the Azure portal. So the subject of security is already covered. Well, let's go with the rest of the script. First, using this command, uh, the, uh, we import uh, and the credential that we save about the login and obtain the access token that we allows us to do the rest of the calls to the Power BI REST API. Then with this, this command, uh, get Power BI group, uh, we get all the workspaces to which this particular user has permission. If we go to the Power BI service here, we get all these workspaces. Uh, here. Okay. All the workspaces uh, this particular user have permission. Okay. Um, and then we go to the PowerShell. We initialize. We initialize the the tables um, where we go to put our information. And we started ranking inside the workspaces, obtaining the information of the workspaces and the ID which is up here, the name, and it's wrongly, and the ID of, of the workspace. Uh, then we go inside the workspaces, and in this command, uh, get Power BI dashboard, we get all the dashboards, all, all, all the dashboards we, we have access, of the information of each dashboard as the ID, the name, if it's read only, and the embedded code. Then all the reports here in this section, all the reports, uh, all the data sets, here, all the data sets, and inside, the data sets all the refresh history. Okay, uh, here. Inside the data set, all the refresh history on demand or schedule. Okay. Uh, note that the refresh history is within the duration of data set. This is because the refreshment is linked to the data sets. We can see it here. Okay, all this information go to the script and down here. All this information is exported to CSV files that will make up the tables of our final model. Uh, with this, we will answer the question about the volume, the quantity, the how many artifacts we have. Let's move on to the question of quality to the use of reports and dashboards. We also answer the question using uh, PowerShell script. And this is the second PowerShell script. OK, uh, this script has no dependency on the first one. It can be executed in any order or simultaneously. 
In this case, our best friend will be Exchange, which is where all the Office 365 audit information lives. Using this, this library, this first library, and connect to uh, import a PS session, and using the commands that it provides, we will obtain the update information about Office 365. Uh, for that, as before, we will set our credentials, so we do not have to gobble. Remember, if something could be automated, it must be automated. Uh, we create a PS session to get the Power BI audit data. Uh, first, we get the users and what Power BI licenses they have, Power, Power BI free licenses or Power BI uh, pro licenses with this code. Okay, we get the users and the licenses and we save uh, everything in CSV files. Then in this section here, uh, we obtain the audit data of Power BI, the record type 15 is Power BI audit log and of Azure Active Directory account logon, the record type 20. Using this command provide for the PS session search unified audit log. Uh, we set the result size to 5,000, which is the maximum value. By default, it will be 100. And as before, we export all this data to a CSV file. And this is all uh, process ending. We get a PS session and remove this PS session. Uh, since we are temporarily limited, obviously, we will not execute the scripts that take approximately a half hour each. So we will have to believe that they work. <laughs> and as a cooking program, here I bring you the prepared dish. Here. Okay. This analysis file generated by the first script and the second screen. Okay, perfect. And now what do we do? We have the CSV files, but we will not read the CSV, CSV files to analyze information. They are horrible. What we do is use Power BI, yes, Power BI to monitor the use of Power BI. Using the CSV files in our model, you can create a monitoring report with this information. Oh. Okay, uh, this is an example of a report create with this information. In the first tab, the principal, uh, we have the information about the sensitive data, the quantity, the number of word spaces, the number of dashboards, the number of reports, the number of data sets, the number of users, and how many licenses, with, uh, Power BI licenses we have. Uh, basically, the information we got with the first script, except for the number of licenses and users that we got from the second one. This is important to know where we are standing today. This is a picture of our organization today, but if, if this is executed monthly and we give the execution dates, we could observe the evolution of the reporter's development within the organization and see how much we improve in comparison with a last six months or a year. In the other tabs, we have information about the value, about the use that is given to the reports in the organization. In the view tab here, uh, we have the number of reports and dashboards viewed, uh, the top 10 of the user who see the most reports and dashboards, uh, the evolution, over time of the reports and dashboard seen and the top 10 of the most viewed reports and dashboard. And what is this good for? Suppose that in your organization we dictate a Power BI training. If we see that after that the visualization increase, it's a good sign about the training. Uh, in this tab, uh, the share tab, we also have the number of shared dashboards. Uh, the users that share the most dashboards, the evolution of the shared dashboards, the shared dashboard by month, and the top 10 shared dashboards. Uh, the same information we have, a similar information we have in the export tab. Here we have the exported reports. 
uh, the number of exported reports, the most exported reports, the top five export uh, user that export reports, the export the report by month, the evolution, and the top 10 export reports. And something similar with the edit tab, but with dashboards and reports. We have all the edited dashboards, all the edited reports, uh, the top five edit users, uh, the edit dashboards and reports uh, over time by month, and the top 10 edited dashboards and reports. Remember, the native application of Power BI allows you to filter the data like particular user, for example, here, we click here, and all my report is filtered, or a particular dashboard, for, for example. And all went together, we can filter for period, per year, per month, for everything. Uh, then we have the refresh history tab here where you can find the refresh data sets, the refresh status, or um, if either refresh uh, was failed or, or complete successfully, and the top 10 of the dashboards that are much refreshed, and how many of them are scheduled, and how many on demand. And if we click here, we filter the report, and we can see the scheduled, scheduled data sets, when it's failed and completed successfully, for example. And finally, my favorite tab, the licenses tab. Uh, here we see the Power BI licenses in our organization and the activities of the visualization or edition of reports, as well as the number of inactive days. Imagine if you are the license, license manager of your company, here you can see all the activity of the user with the licenses granted to them and make better decisions. This tab is very useful, for example, to reassign licenses in these cases where a pro license is not being used as, as expected, or the user is inactive and grant these licenses to users who use them because the organization is paying for those licenses. So we have the total of licenses, the pre licenses, the free licenses, and the top five user uh, inactives. And the most important is the pro because the company is paying paying for the pro licenses. In short, we with two PowerShell script, not very complicated. Uh, we can generate a report in Power BI where we can track the use of Power BI in the organization and make decisions based on that. Okay, uh, everybody um, and to the audience, uh, that, that's going to be just an introduction to, to PowerShell because we, we, you have and you can have all kind of reports and all kind of PowerShell doing uh, different stuff behind the scenes using the Power BI REST API. Uh, I, I know that you can use this kind of the ways to connect with Power BI services. Also, you can do something the same using other tools, like, like for example, uh, I remember some simple from, from the great Chris, Web, Chris Webb, where what I, what, what I following with that is, for example, in this case, he, he created or he allows you uh, or train uh, people to create uh, a Microsoft Flow, uh, with a connector, the connector is using behind the scenes the Power BI REST API, and you can access all kind of activities and tasks, doing things and doing uh, some kind of uh, push and pull information from the Power BI REST API to automatization stuff uh, of Power BI. In this case, what we want to show the audience with Felipe is one way to create a PowerShell script using different models, uh, automat automatization of uh, some kind of governance behavior, uh, and this case of this report that Felipe showed uh, for everyone uh, can handle uh, some kind of information, great for information of governance stuff uh, in your Power BI. Uh, deployment at different organizational levels and companies. So uh, that's going to be uh, all for us. Uh, 
We are really excited to be here. It's a, the first Power BI days for us. Uh, have the, 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 the second or the third time we did this kind of webinars in English because it's not our native language. Uh, we hope that everyone can understand uh, our, our bad English, but uh, of course, uh, any question that you may have, uh, we are open to answer those questions. And I want to thank uh, Chen to the invitation that, that he did for us. And also, I want to thank all the MVP community that uh, 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 all the time support myself and uh, everyone uh, to do this kind of great community networking uh, worldwide. Uh, thanks everyone to be there and I'm going to just wait a minute see if you, someone uh, want to uh, push some questions of, of, of that we were talking about. Okay, well, Thank you for, for doing this. It, it's amazing. Um, so now people know why I reached out to you guys, <laughs> because you guys are good. Um, so there, there are some questions. Uh, one of them is, uh, is more of a suggestion regarding the report. Uh, have you thought about actually um, putting all the metrics on, on one page and using a report filter for the activity type? Yeah, yeah, you can you can do that because you can you can get all the information from the PowerShell, get all the information about activities, and you can put everything in different measures in in the Power BI report. Yeah. Right, right now, it's it's so many features that you have uh, right now in the Power BI desktop that is huge. Mm -hmm. So you can use, for example, a filter. You can get a bookmark to to go and navigate the report. You can do some some cool stuff. With, with this all information. Okay. Um, well, well, the re reactions are pretty unanimous. Uh, they're all saying this is an amazing, uh, great job that you did. Um, it should be available on every workspace. Um, and people want to know uh, if these scripts are available and if the reports are available for download. Um, can we share them uh, through the, the Power BI yeah, days yeah. Uh, content? We, we, yeah, we, we, we can share them. We, 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 we have, you have all kind of, of samples. If you go to the, to the portal that I showed before, the, the models, where the models reside, uh, this this GitHub is amazing. You have different models. You can you can you can see different samples of when you need to, to use whatever kind of, of of PowerShell scripting and different samples for each script using these PowerShell models. So we can we can also upload this. A presentation to slide share and and also share the information uh, of this of the PowerShells. So I'm going to share with you, Chen, so you can upload the information about the slide share and where the uh, PowerShell scripting is going to be reciting. Yeah. Well, after the last webinar, I'll follow up to everybody with an email stating uh, again the recordings.powerbidays.com site where all the recordings are and where they can find all the, the content as well, the slides and stuff like that. Yeah, um, of course, of course, of course. So some other questions that came in is if you can actually show the data model through uh, the, the scripting that you did and actually show it visually in, in a report, I suppose. Yep, yep, I can, I can share that with you. We have... Here we have the data model that we have right now. Uh, you have data sets. You, you, you can access everything behind the scenes using the Power BI REST API. So you have the log details. Uh, with, the, with the first scripts, you access all the, all the artifacts in Power BI, the data set, the report, the workspace, is all the information in the right part of the screen here. And with the second scripts that, that uh, Felipe showed you, uh, you can access all this stuff here, or the audit and log information about Power BI. Uh, what, one, one thing that I want to comment that is really easy to access all, all the information on, on all the platforms in Office 365. So if you want to do the same audit logs with 
uh, for example, Exchange, Yammer, uh, uh, Flow, Planner. You can do everything you want with the log because you access all the information of Office 365. So yeah. the second PowerShell access everything in Office 365. Yeah. OneDrive, SharePoint, Exchange Online, Skype for Business, Sway, Yammer, you can do whatever you want and get all the information on all those platforms. And for example, imagine create each tab of our Power BI report for each platform that you, that you want to audit. One uh, page for Yammer, one page for OneDrive, and you get all the information of the audits of all those platforms. And not only Power BI. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, that's also why you probably need all those uh, administra administrator rights to actually get the data. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. You yeah. you need to access the, the 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 admin rights to access that log log information. Uh, I do know for the uh, the logging itself, you can set up in in the Office 365 uh, security center. There's an option to set up a new, I think it's called a, a role. Um, and you can actually give uh, someone only permission on the audit log. Yeah, that, that's right, Jen. That's right, Jen. You, 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 can, you can do that right now in the security session. You can give access only to audit logs to, yeah. to, one, to one of those roles. There's still a ton of information in there that, uh, that should be highly secure. But yeah, at least you don't give them uh, too many permissions. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 I am sharing also with you and all the audience uh, some ways of uh, contact me or Felipe there. You can contact uh, us uh, on Twitter or just email. And we are open to new questions and to uh, uh, hope we can help the, the network and the community of Power BI. And it's a huge community. I love the community of Power BI, and we are here to help. Yeah, cool. We all have the same goal. Um, there have been more reactions <laughs> stating how awesome you guys are <laughs> and what a great presentation it was. Uh, so I want to thank you again, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll see you next time again in uh, three months. Yep, yep. Thanks. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, we, we are going to be there. Thanks for the invitation again. And, and yeah, we, are, we are more than more than happy to, to share this kind of presentation with you and with all the audience. Okay. Have a nice uh, day over there and uh, talk to you on, the, on Twitter. Great, great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody, to be there. Bye-bye. Thank you.